Lesson 10 at the grocery store. Hello. Today we're going to learn some new vocabulary. Secondly, we're going to review adjectives. After that, we'll look at some different endings for adjectives, and then we're going to review count and non-count nouns. Uh, we'll learn how to use them with different units of measurement. After that, we'll learn some participles, and finally, we'll look at some new quantitatives. But first, let's look at some new vocabulary. A shopping cart. A shopping cart. A shopping cart is a small carriage on four small wheels. Shoppers put what they want to buy inside the cart, and some shopping carts have a special, sh uh, special seat for children. The deli. The deli. The deli is a part of a grocery store which sells salads, cheeses, and cooked meats. The produce section. The produce section. The produce section is a part of a grocery store that sells fresh fruit and vegetables. A cashier. A cashier. A cashier is someone whose job it is to receive money in a grocery store. A cash register. A cash register. Cash register is a machine used in shops to keep money in and record the amount of money received from each sale. A receipt. A receipt. A receipt is a written statement that the cashier gives to the customer to show she has received payment for the groceries. A shelf. A shelf. A shelf is a long, narrow, flat piece of material that is used for putting such things as groceries on. An aisle. An aisle. An aisle is a long passage between rows of shelves in a grocery store. An express cashier. An express cashier. An express cashier is where people with few items go to pay for their groceries, usually 10 or less. A stock boy. A stock boy. Stock boy is a person who puts products on the shelves in grocery stores so that customers may buy them. Spices. Spices. Spices are powders or seeds taken from plants that you put into food that you're cooking to give it a special flavor. Examples of spices are salt and pepper, cinnamon, ginger, parsley, and oregano. Uh, in America, people can pay for their groceries uh, with money, a credit card, or with, by writing a check. Let's go over these again. A shopping cart, the deli, the produce section, a cashier, a cash register, a receipt, a shelf, an aisle, an express cashier, a stock boy, and spices. Adjectives. Let's quickly review adjectives. Please have a look at these sentences. Michael bought five green apples. Mary is using the new shopping cart. The grocery store will close the spice aisle today. My father thinks grocery stores are boring. Adjectives describe nouns, and they usually come before the noun. For example, five green apples. Sometimes they can come after the noun. Grocery stores are boring. Let's practice. Let's use some adjectives in our sentences. Monica, do you like to go to the grocery store? I do, but not for too long. I'm healthy. I like to look at vegetables and fresh vegetables and fruits. I like to eat them. Mm -hmm. What about you, Lewis? 
I hate the grocery store. It isn't interesting. Mm, I agree. And Rosa? I love the grocery store. I love the uh, magazine section. I like to read sports magazine. Good. I can see that everyone remembers their adjectives. And now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. The old grocery store will close on Saturday. Molly always has to put her naughty child in the children's seat. Claire hates to shop in the smelly fish section. The video section isn't new. Read and repeat. Adjective endings. We can now look at different endings for adjectives. These are called suffixes. Suffixes. Please have a look at these sentences. That grocery store is famous for its homemade pies. The meat in the deli department is not edible. The stock boy is usually very helpful. Some mail shoppers are helpless. Suffixes are letters added to the end of a word to form a new word. They can change the word from a noun or a verb to an adjective. In the first sentence, the noun, fame, becomes the adjective famous by adding O-U-S. In the second sentence, the verb eat becomes the adjective edible by changing this letter and adding I-B-L-E. In the third sentence, the verb help becomes the adjective helpful by adding F-U-L. And in the fourth sentence, the verb help becomes the adjective helpless by adding L-E-S-S. -S. Helpful means it will help you. Helpless means it cannot help you. Let's look at some nouns or verbs that can be changed into adjectives by adding a suffix. Danger, suffix O-U-S, adjective dangerous. Uh, noun fame, Suffix O-U-S, adjective famous. The neighborhood near the grocery store is quite dangerous. Okay, next one we have is noun music. Suffix A-L, adjective musical. The noun is politics. The suffix is A-L. The adjective political. And the noun is economy, suffix A-L, adjective economical. Shopping at the local market can be economical. Right. We have the noun cloud, suffix Y, adjective cloudy. The noun sun, suffix Y, adjective sunny. And the noun dirt, suffix Y, adjective dirty. Look at Bob's dirty child. He's walking in aisle seven. Okay, we have the verb attract. The suffix of, I-V-E, and the adjective attractive. The verb create, the suffix I-V-E, and the adjective creative. The attractive woman is in that grocery store. Okay, we have the verb enjoy, the suffix A-B-L-E, adjective enjoyable. And the verb 
comfort or the noun comfort, the suffix able, and the adjective is comfortable, not comfortable, comfortable. Rita spent an enjoyable morning at the grocery store. Right, okay, here is the verb and noun care, suffix ful, adjective careful. The noun pain, suffix ful, adjective painful. Careful shoppers find the best bargains. The next noun, thought, the suffix less, adjective thoughtless. Job, the noun, suffix less, adjective jobless. The thoughtless woman angered many shoppers. Okay, let's practice. Lewis, I know you love shopping. Shopping for groceries is painful and full of pain. Shopping for cities is painless. There's no pain. Very good. Rosa, what do you think of shopping? I think it's very enjoyable. I love to shop if the weather is rainy. Very good. And Monica? I don't mind shopping with my mom. She can't see well, so it's a little dangerous for the other shoppers if she shops alone. I see. Thank you very much. And now it's helpful for you to look and listen. Look and listen. The homeless man had to leave the grocery store because he had no money. Ron is a very helpful stock boy. I think people who use a credit card to buy one item are thoughtless. The thoughtful lady let the boy with an apple go ahead of her in the express line. Read and repeat. Count and non-count nouns. Well, now let's review count and non-count nouns. And then we'll look at how to change non-count nouns into count nouns. Let's start with count nouns. Please have a look at these sentences. We bought five ripe apples. There are six aisles in that grocery store. Craig bought a magazine at the grocery store. How many oranges did Frank buy? Count nouns are nouns that can be counted. They can be singular or they can be plural. An indefinite article, a or an, can come before a count noun. And to ask a question about a count noun, we use the sentence, how many? Let's practice. What did you buy the last time you went to a grocery store, Rosa? I bought 10 onions. My mother was going to make soup. Very good. Monica, what did you want to buy? I wanted to buy a new chair for the balcony. They are very cheap at the grocery store. I bought one there too. Lewis, how many times did you go to the grocery store last month? I didn't go a single time. I had grocery stores. Most men hate shopping. Thank you, everyone. And now let's look at non-count nouns. Please take a look at these sentences. Carrie bought some sugar at the store. My friend bought some rice at the same store. The noise at that grocery store is terrible. I like that store because they play music. Non-count nouns are nouns that cannot be counted. You cannot place an indefinite article, a or an, before a non-count noun. You can place the definite article, the, before a non-count noun because it's specific. Non-count nouns are usually singular and to ask a question about a non-count noun, we use how much. How many count nouns, how much non-count nouns. 
Let's practice. What can you buy in the deli section, Monica? You can buy some meat and some cheese. Very good. And what can you buy in the produce department, Rosa? You can buy some fruit. Excellent. How much sugar did you buy the last time you were in a grocery store, Lewis? I didn't buy any sugar. I didn't buy any cola. I had grocery stores. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. There are 70 shopping carts in this grocery store. There is a children's seat in each cart. I think the orange juice is in aisle six. The bread at that market is not very good. Read and repeat. Now let's see how we can use count nouns and non-count nouns together. Have a look at these examples. Jay bought a bag of sugar at the grocery store. He also bought a bar of soap. They don't have any bottles of ketchup at the market. Henry didn't need a bunch of bananas. Well, non-count nouns include ideas. For example, history and knowledge. These are ideas. They also include emotions. Emotions, for example, love, hate. Activities, uh, tennis, Things you can measure. Things you can measure. For example, gasoline. You can measure gasoline. You can measure rice. And things you can group together. For example, you can group together Furniture, chairs, sofa, stools, furniture. So ideas, history, knowledge. Emotions, love, hate, for example. Activities such as tennis, things you can measure, gasoline, rice, and things you can group together, for example, furniture. Now we can give specific amounts to either count nouns or non-count nouns by using certain units of measurement. Units of measurement. Let's have a look at some units of measurement now. We have a bag. We can use a bag with sugar, which is non-count, or a bag of potatoes and potato chips, which are countable. We have a bar. A bar of candy, uncountable, or a bar of hard soap, also uncountable. Next we have a bottle of detergent, a bottle of soda, a bottle of juice. A box of cereal or a box of detergent. A bunch, usually fruit, a bunch of bananas, a bunch of grapes. A can of soup, beans, tuna, and soda. A can is also like a tin, sometimes called a tin or a can. A carton. A carton of eggs, milk or cigarettes. A carton is like a box. We can have a cup, a tablespoon or a teaspoon. We use this with liquid and dry ingredients. Okay, next we have a dozen. 
usually just for eggs. But another example is uh, loaves of bread, a dozen loaves of bread or a dozen eggs. A gallon, a pint or a quart of liquids, for example, milk or something like ice cream. A jar of mayonnaise, a jam or a jar of mustard. Loaf of bread. So not breads, but one loaf of bread or two loaves of bread. Next we have a package, a package of potato chips or a package of spaghetti. A piece, a piece of cake, a piece of pie or a piece of meat. A pound or a kilo, a pound of meat or a kilo of meat and a pound or kilo of cheese. A roll of paper towels or a roll of toilet paper a stick of butter, and finally, a tube of toothpaste. Now, these units of measurement are used this way. You have the unit of measurement, plus of, plus the count or non-count noun. Now, note that dozen does not have of. So dozen, oops, dozen eggs is not dozen of eggs, just a dozen eggs. So unit of measurement of count, non-count noun, for example, a bag of potato chips or a bag of sugar. Let's practice. Lewis, what did your mother buy the last time she went to a grocery store? I don't know, maybe she bought two loaves of bread. Okay, thank you. What did you buy last time, Monica? I bought four bottles of Fanta and two cartons of milk. Mm, I love milk. What did you buy, Rosa? I bought a jar of rosemary jam, two sticks of butter, and a loaf of bread. I love toast with butter and jam. That's good. Thank you, everybody. Now it's time for a piece of Look and Listen. Look and Listen. You can't buy cartons of cigarettes in that store. Please buy a carton of ice cream for the party. We need some rolls of paper towels from the store. Helen purchased a half dozen eggs at the market. Read and repeat. Participles. Now let's talk about participles. Please have a look at these examples. Mike thinks shopping is boring. He feels bored. It is a confusing supermarket. They are confused shoppers. The present participle is formed this way. The present participle is the simple form, simple form of the verb plus ing. And the past participle is formed by the simple form plus ed. Some participles can be used as adjectives and examples of these adjectives are present participle, boring, past, bored. Present, interesting, past, interested. 
Present frustrating, past frustrated. Present confusing, past confused. Present amusing, past amused. Present exciting, past excited. And present surprising, past surprised. Well, let's look at when they are used. The present participle expresses how the subject affects someone or something. The first sentence expresses the effect shopping has on Mike. The present participle conveys an active meaning. The noun it modifies does something. So Mike thinks shopping is boring. This means, let's put that on the board, Mike thinks shopping is boring. So shopping is boring. This means shopping bores Mike. In the third sentence, the noun supermarket does something. It confuses. Thus, it is described as a confusing supermarket. It is a confusing supermarket. This means the supermarket confuses, confuses people, shall we say. The past participle expresses how the subject feels about someone or something. In the second sentence, what Mike thinks about shopping is expressed. The past participle conveys a passive meaning. We say, he feels bored. If we think of it as like a passive sentence, he feels bored by shopping. He feels bored, it's the same as he feels bored by shopping, or he feels bored with shopping, it's the same. In the fourth sentence, the shoppers are confused by something, and they are described as confused shoppers. So we write, they are confused shoppers. This is the same as they are confused by something. Well, actually, it's in this situation, they are confused by the supermarket. So we have, they are confused shoppers. This is the same as they are confused by or confused with the supermarket. Well, let's practice. Do you understand, Monica? I think so. It's a little confusing. Ah, so you are confused then. Yeah. It shows what you feel about a subject. It's confusing. So you use the present participle. Mm -hmm. Good. Lewis, what do you think about shopping at the grocery store? I hate it. It's boring. I'm bored to death. Very good. Monica, what about you? It's interesting when I have money. When I have a lot of money, everything interests me. Me too. And what about you, Rosa? I will use a word I learned last week. Shopping is fascinating for me. Watching the people fascinates me. Great job. And now it's time for you to be interested in our fascinating look and listen. Look and listen. Shopping with children is annoying. Shopping with older people can be tiring. Jason is always annoyed when he shops with his children. Fred is always tired after shopping in the grocery store. Read and repeat.
quantitatives. Now let's look at our last topic today. Topic is quantitatives or expressions of quantity. Please take a look at these sentences. Andy bought two apples. He gave both of the apples to his brother. Neil purchases a few bottles of cola at the grocery store. He didn't buy much rice. Expressions of quantity precede nouns. They come before nouns. They tell you how many or how much of something there is or there are. Some expressions of quantity are used only with count nouns and some are used only with non-count nouns. Some can be used with count nouns and non-count nouns. Let's look at some expressions of quantity. We have one and one peach used with count nouns. Each, each peach. These are not used with non-count nouns. Every, every peach. Next, we have both, both peaches. A couple of, a couple of peaches. A few is next, a few, then a few peaches. Several, several peaches. Many, many peaches. Now we have expressions of quantity used with non-count nouns. These are a little, a little salt. Much, much salt. And now these expressions can be used with both. Not any, not any peaches, or not any salt. Some, some peaches, some salt. A lot of, a lot of peaches, a lot of salt. Lots of, lots of peaches, lots of salt. Most, most peaches and most salt. And finally, all, all peaches and all salt. Well, let's practice. Lewis, what do you usually buy when you go to the grocery store? I don't go to the grocery store. My mother buys, uh, usually buys several pieces of meat. She doesn't buy much rice. Nobody likes it in my family. Thank you, Lewis. What about you, Monica? I usually buy several bags of fruit. I buy lots of vegetables and fruit. Great. And Rosa? I usually buy a little butter. Sometimes I buy four sticks of butter. I also buy mini eggs. Thank you, everyone. So now we have a little time to look and listen. Look and listen. Jeff bought all the apples in the produce section. Most of them weren't ripe. Lots of them had worms. Several of the apples were good, though. Read and repeat. Review. Well, now let's do some exercises. Let's start with an easy exercise. Put the appropriate adjective before the nouns in the following sentences. Rosa, you can do the first one. Cal bought something apples and something bananas and something carrots. What did she buy? Carl bought green apples, ripe bananas, and fresh carrots. Green apples, ripe bananas, and what kind of carrots, sorry? Fresh carrots. And fresh carrots. Good. Cal bought green apples, ripe bananas, and fresh carrots. Lewis, do this one. 
the something shopper was shouting at the something cashier. The angry shopper was shouting at the rude cashier. Good. The angry shopper was shouting at the rude cashier. Wonderful. Monica, your turn. The deli had a sale on something fish, something cheese, and something salads. What do you think it is, Monica? Uh, my favorite section. The deli had a sale on smoked fish, mm -hmm. French cheese, mm -hmm. and Italian salad. Good. The deli had a sale on smoked fish, French cheese, and Italian salads. Great job, everyone. Thank you. Now let's do an, uh, let's do an exercise practicing the different endings for adjectives. I'll give you a subject, and you give me two adjectives describing the subject. Please use the adjectives using the special endings that we learned today. Okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, just get some board space. And Lewis, you can do the first one. And that will be the something cashier. Monica, you can do this one. The okay. something grocery store. And Rosa, this one's for you. The something shopper. Lewis, what's yours? The dirty cashier. Yep. The attractive cashier. Good. Dirty cashier and the attractive cashier. Monica. The economical grocery store. Economical, yeah. And famous. The famous. Yeah. Good. The economical grocery store and the famous grocery store and Rosa. The helpless shopper, the thoughtful shopper. The helpless shopper and the thoughtful shopper. A good work, everybody. Now let's pretend we're shopping in a grocery store. Let's each buy three things. Mm -hmm. And let's use units of measurement to talk about the things that we bought. Rosa, what did you buy? I bought a bag of candy, a jar of ginger, and a piece of chocolate cake. Mm, sounds good. And what did you buy, Monica? I bought a carton of eggs, a tube of toothpaste, and four sticks of butter. Very good. And Louis? I didn't buy anything. My mother bought two pints of ice cream, a can of soup, and four rolls of toilet paper. Thank you, Louis, and thank you, everybody. Let's do another exercise. Let's fill in the blanks with the appropriate participle. So, Lewis, since you're so good with that last answer, you can go first this time. And I'll give you a sentence. You hate grocery stores. You think they are what, Lewis? You think they are... I hate them. You think, I think they are um, horrible. I think they are boring. You think they're boring. Good. You think they are boring. Rosa, next one. The shopper was very... The shopper was very... Frustrated. Oh, very frustrated, okay. The shopper was very frustrated. And Monica, you can do the last one. My morning at the supermarket was very... What? Exciting. Okay. Exciting. My morning at the supermarket was very exciting. Great job by everyone there. One last final exercise, and I think this time you can fill in the blanks with uh, the best options. So let's fill in the blanks with an appropriate quantitative this time, like uh, a three apples, or a couple of apples, or uh, some apples, or many apples, okay. or whatever you think is the best answer. All right. Let's go. Monica, you can go first. Janet only bought something apples. What do you think, Monica? Janet only bought a couple of apples. Okay. Janet only bought a couple of apples. Uh, okay. Rosa, you do this one. We don't need something water. 
What do you think the best answer is there, Rosa? Uh, we don't need much water. We don't need much water. And Lewis, the last one. Joan needs something of eggs. John needs lots of eggs. Lots of eggs. Super. Thank you, everyone. Great job today. Now it's time to listen and write. Listen and write. Listen and write these sentences. Number one. The grocery store was old and dirty. Number two. The long aisles were filled with busy shoppers. Number three, that cashier wasn't very helpful. Number four, economical shoppers are always looking for cheap stores. Number five, Andrea bought ten loaves of bread. Number six, we need some new jars of spice. Number seven. Shopping for groceries is often boring for men. Number eight. My wife had an exciting day at the grocery store. Number nine. We need lots of groceries from the market. Number ten. Many shoppers were unhappy with the cashiers. Now check your work. Number one, the grocery store was old and dirty. Number two, the long aisles were filled with busy shoppers. Number three, that cashier wasn't very helpful. Number four, economical shoppers are always looking for cheap stores. Number five, Andrea bought ten loaves of bread. Number six, we need some new jars of spice. Number seven, shopping for groceries is often boring for men. Number eight, my wife had an exciting day at the grocery store. Number nine, we need lots of groceries from the market. And number ten, many shoppers were unhappy with the cashiers. Now read the story and answer the questions. Read and answer. Mike owns three grocery stores. They sell many things, produce, meat, clothing, and some small pieces of furniture. It is a big store. There are many aisles and lots of shelves. Mike has a couple of parking lots for each store. Kate is Mike's wife. She thinks that owning grocery stores is useless. She thinks her life is boring. Mike is always working. He is never at home. She thinks he is a thoughtless husband. She is a very frustrated wife. Mike wants to buy a bakery. He wants to sell fresh loaves of bread, pieces of strawberry cheesecake, and boxes of chocolate cookies. He wants to open his new store in 2005. If it is successful, he will open more bakeries. Kate will not be happy. Now listen and answer the questions. Number one. How many grocery stores does Mike own? Number two. What do they sell at the grocery stores? Number three, how many parking lots does Mike have for each store? Number four, who is Kate? Number five, 
What does she think about grocery stores? Number six, why is Kate frustrated? Number seven, what does Mike want to buy? Number eight, what does he want to sell there? Number nine, when does he want to open the first bakery? And number 10, will his wife be happy? Now check your work. Number one, how many grocery stores does Mike own? Mike owns three grocery stores. Number two, what do they sell at the grocery stores? They sell many things. Number three, how many parking lots does Mike have for each store? He has a couple of parking lots for each store. Number four, who is Kate? Kate is Mike's wife. Number five, what does she think about grocery stores? She thinks owning them is useless. Number six, why is Kate frustrated? She thinks her life is boring and Mike works too much. Number seven, what does Mike want to buy? Mike wants to buy a bakery. Number eight, what does he want to sell there? He wants to sell loaves of bread, pieces of cheesecake, and cookies. Number nine, when does he want to open the first bakery? He wants to open the new bakery in 2005. Number 10, will his wife be happy? No, she will not be happy. See you next time. Bye-bye. Practicing English. Dave, we were talking the other day and you mentioned you had a birthday coming up. When is it exactly? It's next Friday, the 22nd. Why? We were just curious. Do you have anything special you always like to do on your birthday? Like see a movie, go away for a few days, stuff like that? Well, like most people, I think, I like to spend my birthday with my friends. I usually like to have a nice dinner with everyone, then have a little party, Maybe even a big, delicious chocolate cake. Hmm, sounds good. Go on. Hey, what are you two up to? I know that look you just gave her. What's going on? Well, you've been such a good friend to us since you got here that we wanted to plan a special birthday for you. We wanted to know what your favorite foods are, and we do all the cooking ourselves. That's sweet, but you don't have to do that. Dave, we want to make it for you before the party on your birthday. Really? You girls are being unbelievably kind, but it's too much trouble and work. No, really. We want to do this. Please let us make this delicious dinner. Remember, we'll get to eat this incredible food too. Okay. Okay, you win. Okay. We'll be ready to go to the grocery store in just a minute. All right. If you really want to know, my favorite meal is full of things, aren't full to your health, but delicious to eat. For example? Okay, my dream meal starts off with a thick and creamy Boston clam chowder, served with big, fresh pieces of clam. Then, I love a thick, juicy steak, cooked medium rare, you know, red in the middle, with a baked potato topped with lots of butter and sour cream. Also, I like to eat a salad, gotta have at least one healthy thing, and broccoli covered with melted cheese. Mm, for dessert, that's easy. Chocolate cake. Hmm, got it. Carrie, we can pick up a few of these things next week so they're fresh, but I know my grocery store can get us started. 
Let's go right now and see if they have all the ingredients for Dave's birthday celebration. I have to pick up a few things for tonight's dinner myself. Sure, Mon. I didn't have class tonight, so I'll cook tonight too. Since we're going to the grocery store together, we might as well eat together. Let's practice for next week. Excellent idea. Let's go. See ya. See ya. Look at those tomatoes, Carrie. Have you ever seen them that big? Those are huge. Some of them are like basketballs. Well, they aren't that big, but some of them are really <laughs> enormous. Hey, I bet they'd be great in that salad we were planning for for tonight. Dave said he likes broccoli with melted cheese, right? Yes, he did. This broccoli looks super fresh. Shall we get some? Yeah, let's do that. I love broccoli too. It's delicious with melted cheese. And look at those big heads of lettuce. We can make a really big salad with those. Yeah, I think we'll have a good dinner tonight. It'll be good practice for Dave's party next week. You're right. Hey Monica, are you good at making baked potatoes? Sure. Dave's meal is easily made. Nothing's very complicated. It's a simple meal, so we shouldn't get in over our heads. I mean, I'm not the most talented cook in the world, but thankfully Dave's birthday dinner isn't very difficult. Hey Mon, a few of these tomatoes in our basket have soft spots on the other side. Let's put these back and get some fresh ones. Good I carry. I didn't notice that. I can't wait to eat a good big salad tonight. And let's get some bread, some cheese, and of course, dessert. Excellent. So you and I are set for cooking for Dave on Friday, right? Yeah, I can't wait to see his face when he eats our incredible meal. Well, he's a great guy, so we should do our best. Thanks for helping me on this. Let's go look at the steaks and get shopping. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Okay.